Good afternoon, dear students. Uh, today is 5th November 2020 and uh, today I will deal you in the paper of population studies MA semester 2nd, 3rd, uh, the topic of demographic effects of sex and age structure and its economic and social implications. So let us start with the age structure transition. And we all know because we have already uh, studied the demographic transition theory in the paper second that the decline in fertility leads to decline in the birth rate and decrease in the annual number of births and also decrease in the annual number of births results in a decrease in the proportion of young population and from here the impact begins okay and then the large base of population pyramid shifts upwards age pyramids no longer remains triangular in shape. So dear students, uh, upward shift of the large base of population pyramid results in an increased concentration of population in the working ages and that is the bulging of age pyramids. Okay. And then as fertility continues to decline, you remember the demographic transition second and third uh, stages. The bulge continues to move upwards until it reaches old ages. So the age pyramids in this situation resembles like a rectangular of inverted triangular. So this is how age structure transition works. And then during the period between the decline in young dependency and increase in old dependency, the ratio of the working age population to the dependent population increases. Okay. And this is how we can talk about the social and economic impacts because the increased concentration of population in a working ages as a result of demographic transition may be dividend as well as liability. And here nowadays our Prime Minister says that this is a dividend or burden for economic growth and social economic development. So this age structure transition is impacting the society as well as economics. And so students, the youth dependency ratio is the proportion of youths that is under age 15 to economically active adults that is from age 15 to 64. And remember that this is the age of working population even in India also. And this is a global average. And so the youth dependency ratio is very high in lower de least developed countries. That is around 40% while it, it is around 20% in developed nations. So here you can uh, compare between least developed countries and developed countries that the youth dependency ratio is very high in LDCs and in very low in DCs. So let us compare India and China. What was the position of India and China in 1950 and what is at present? So here you can see that India and China both were in this rectangular shape in 1950. Okay. So that means the growth story was same in the year 1950 and demographic transition was same in the year 1950. But as come in 21st century, you can see the change of Chinese demographic composition. India's pyramid is as it is triangular and widened breast, so high fertility and uh, growing uh, population and China's base become narrowed and the working age is very much huge, working age is very high and the shape becomes like rectangular. So that's why China invested in their human and translate human as a human capital and hence China becomes developed nation. So we have to understand if you have to tackle with China in the economic front, we have to also address the demographic pattern. Okay. So this is the dependency ratio. You can see uh, uh, blue one is a old and young is a young. Uh, red is a young, you can see the India's this graph and China's graph. In India, 
in 2000 uh, young is still high but old is low but in china old age is high because life expectancy is high in china so this is difference between india and china demographic features and hence we can say that demographic opportunity or liability is only a one time phenomena and the magnitude depends upon the speed of fertility decline so dear students when fertility declines at a rapid pace the implications of demographic opportunity or liability are large okay and when fertility decline slowly implications are small so this is how you have to understand about the implications and then talking of the dynamics of the population growth we can say that the reduction in the number of births is possible only through regulating fertility that is number of live births per couple that is women and achieving replacement fertility is necessary to achieve population stabilization and this is again you remind you recall demographic transition model that in the fourth stage many countries have reached to the population stabilization period and in the absence of mortality replacement fertility is two children per couple this is the significant feature of developed nation and the replacement fertility is more than two children when infant and child mortality is high and this is the specific feature of least or developing nations so here compares begins okay and it is an opportunity when increased manpower utilized as producers of goods and services this is economic criteria this is social impact that opportunity is when there is increased manpower is utilized as a producers of goods and services okay and in this situation age structure transition spurs economic growth and accelerates social and economic progress okay if the increased manpower is not productively utilized it becomes liability to the social and economic production system and retards social economic progress so this is how you can uh, deal with this topic dear students that how the demography becomes one time liability or other other time opportunity and this is in the hands of policy frame workers for uh, policy frame makers and how to deal with indian demographic features so this this is the hidden momentum of population growth that there are two reasons for the hidden momentum of population growth rate that is high birth rates cannot be altered substantially overnight this you we all know so we have to make a specific policy for that and the age structure of least developed countries population is a specific phenomena and i will show you figure that how this is a hidden momentum of population growth you can see in nigeria in bangladesh in iran and brazil to th to in 20 2050 this year ultimate fertility achieved in all those countries and in we are comparing with 1990 to 2035 to 2150 you can see the nigeria will be ultimate fertility till 2050 bangladesh is still uh, ultimate fertility will uh, till 20, 2150 will low and that is the specific reason of how we can deal with the hidden momentum of population growth and then we can say that what are the principal determinants or cause or high fertility rates in the developing nation for this question we can again ask that can this determinants of the demand for children be influenced by government policy to answer these questions we turn to a very old and famous classical demographic model of malthusian population trap and students the birth rates and death rates are declining around the world we all know and overall economic development public health programs and improvements in food production and distribution 
water and sanitation have led to dramatic decline in death rates and women now have fewer children than they died in that than did in 1950s and nevertheless if death rates are lower than birth rates population will still grow also it is possible for absolute numbers of births to increase even when birth rates decline so this is the current situation and ongoing situation worldwide for the economic development and for the social well beings okay and then we can see that there is a 10 places with lowest total fertility worldwide that that is also below the replacement level this is a figure of 2005 in china morocco special emission region there is only 0 0.84 in china hong kong only 0 0.94 ukraine 1.12 czechoslovakia 1.17 slovakia 1.20 Slovenia, 1.22 Republic of Korea, 1.23 Moldova, 1.23 Bulgaria, 1.24 and Belarus, 1.24. These all countries have got the replacement level and even below the replacement level. And these countries are now witnessing the low economic demand due to low population. So this is also a new challenge. And I've talked to you earlier in the demographic transition model. That's why in the demographic transition model, the fifth stages, stage emerges. So when we talk about the notes on women of childbearing age, then we can say that the number of women of childbearing age more than doubled between 1950 to 1990 from 620 million to over 1.3 million billion and that is still growing and their numbers are expected to reach over 2 billion by the middle of this century according to the United Nations medium projection so this is also we have to talk about and the number of women in their childbearing years has increased since the 1950s and is projected to continue to increase to 2050 so the number of children per woman has declined since the 50s and it is projected to continue to decline. So this is a good sign. And so all countries shown in the earlier replacement level is a sign of development. So in, in 2045 to 2050, infants born around the world can expect to live an average of 75 years. This is a sign of development and up 10 years from today and Africa will experience the largest increase in life expectancy from 49 to 65 years and life expectancy varies widely by region and in more developed countries life expectancy averages 76 years compared with only 49 years in Africa you can see in this bar diagram and also the trend of urbanization this is a world figure uh, and, uh, Red one is 1950, yellow one is 2000, and black one is expected to 2030. This is a world figure, this is the Africa figure, this is the Asia figure, this is the Latin America, and this is a more developed region. So you can compare well that how the trend of urbanization is going. So if you have to develop your nation, you have to fall yourself in an urbanization mode, and you have to control your fertility rate and write your own story of development and that will positively impact the economic development. Thank you.